Welcome to the Inspired by Her Story podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin Casso, travel and brand photographer and the founder of Caitlin Casso Creations, where I share other women's stories through my photographs and now this podcast. Inspired by Her Story is a podcast dedicated to inspiring, motivating, encouraging, and empowering women to get out of their comfort zones and follow their dreams. Whether it's owning their own business, experiencing something new, or making a major life change, I want to encourage other women to follow their dreams and live their lives to the fullest. Throughout this podcast, I will be sharing my own stories and those of inspirational women with hopes to let souls connect and adventures to unwind. Follow along as I take you with me during my travels, experiences, and encounters with these amazing women. On today's episode of Inspired by Her Story is a mini series called Her Journey, where I interview women before, during, and after they experience something outside of their comfort zone. So often we hear about people's experiences after they already did it, but hardly hear how they feel before or while they're doing it. Everyone can relate to that nervous feeling, so I wanted to bring these stories to you so you can experience their entire journey with them. Today, Morgan Brown joins me. Morgan is a certified life and business coach who partners with people to build plans and take action towards their dreams. Morgan focuses on helping her clients understand oneself, face the resistance of growth, and build sustainable habits for their success. Morgan's ultimate passion is coaching other dreamers to continuously choose their growth over their comfort and find joy in their everyday life. On this episode, Morgan is going to take us through her journey as she prepares to pick up her life and move throughout the world for the next year. So today on the podcast, we have someone very special. Her name is Morgan Brown, and she is a mindset coach. And now this episode is going to be a little different than your normal episode. So Morgan is going to be the first person that I'm taking through kind of like a series um, on my podcast where I will be talking about something that's getting her out of her comfort zone and we will be doing an interview before she actually does that, possibly during it, and then also afterwards when she um, has some time to kind of reflect upon her experience. And so I'm really excited to do this today. So this is the four episode with Morgan Brown. Morgan, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Caitlin. I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, of course. I'm so excited. This is going to be awesome. And I figure this is a great opportunity because so many people, they'll do interviews or they'll talk about an experience that they went through after the fact. And I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to kind of give people the whole journey of something that has gotten someone out of their comfort zone because they might be able to resonate with them in the before stage rather than the after stage. Um, So I'm really excited to kind of take this a different route than most people do. So thank you again for joining me. Yeah, of course. I'm so excited. And I think you said it perfectly, you know, that there's beauty in the process. So it's going to be an exciting, but messy, but awesome kind of experience to, to show the whole entire thing, which I'm excited about. Yeah, definitely. So tell us a little bit more about um, who you are and what you do. Yes. So like you said, I am a life and mindset coach. So I work with people to break through what is holding them back from getting what, what they want in life, whatever that may be for them, whether it's tackling a big dream or making a big life transition, finding clarity. So I really work with them to find that clarity, create that vision, start taking action on it. And then I'm really there to guide and support them and keep them accountable as they start to reach that goal or dream. Awesome. And I've been lucky enough to have a couple calls with Morgan myself as well. And every time I feel amazing after, I have to say, there's, I've like (laughs) plans my day around it where I'm like, okay, I'm going to have a call with Morgan. So that means I need to do something afterwards that I needed inspiration for. And then- (laughs) (laughs) You're so sweet. You're so sweet. (laughs) And so now you decided to make quite a big life changing decision recently by participating in a program called Remote Year. So can you tell us a little bit more about what that is? Yes. So yes, big decision. Um, Remote Year is a work and travel program. 
So you, anyone that has a remote job is able to join the program and you travel to a new country every month for a year. So with a group of about 25, 30, 35, like in that, in that range, um, all different ages all from all across the world. And you travel together throughout these countries and the program sets up the accommodations and the travel for you. So you really have everything kind of planned for you and you're able to kind of immerse yourself in the culture um, and really experience the city. So I will be doing that for the next year. Oh, that's so exciting. And so now I know there's also an option to even do like a four month program as well, right? Yeah. So they have, they have four month and six month um, programs as well, but I will be doing the 12 month. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh my God. I feel like you have to go big or go home with that situation. <laughs> that's what I thought. I was like, should I do four? Oh, should I do six? Okay. Let's just do the 12. <laughs> yeah. And when is it that you're going to be leaving? I leave August 25th. Oh, that's so exciting. And so what made you decide to move forward with um, this decision, especially because it's kind of like taking your life and literally moving it across the world? So it's so funny. It's actually been almost exactly a year since I've been seriously considering this decision. Oh, this, awesome. this decision. So it's really taken a year for me to say yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot has been happened in the past year. So it's hard to think about one clear answer that got me to a yes. Mm -hmm. But I think it was really, I finally sat down and started to like vision. Okay. One year from now, if I'm in the same exact place, doing the same exact things as where I'm at now, am I going to be happy? Mm -hmm. And the answer was no. And that kind of turned into the yes to say, or to say yes for remote year is kind of how I went back, um, went about that decision. Oh, that's so awesome. And that's so true. You know, if it, I always think if something keeps coming back to you and you can't get it out of your mind, then there's a reason for it. You know, it's one thing if you found out about a program similar to that and then you totally forget about it and months later, you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. But if you constantly were thinking about it for a year, then it's kind of meant to be. Absolutely. I think I thought about it every day. And actually, funny story, I was supposed to leave in June. So I was supposed to leave um, on a program and faced a lot of fear, faced a lot of resistance and thought for but almost second guessed myself. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm going on a later program. So it's been a yes and a maybe and a yes and a back and forth. But like you said, like it just still is not leaving my mind. So kind of push through that resistance and and I'm going to say yes. Mm -hmm. And I love that though, because, you know, you're getting yourself out of your comfort zone in order to make this decision. And even though you hit that point where you second guessed yourself and you were like, okay, maybe I shouldn't do it. You still like gave yourself that time to reflect upon it and then be like, nope, that's it. I'm doing it. And that's pretty awesome because a lot of times people get stuck and they'll say what they feel like once they say no to something that they can't make the decision to say yes afterwards. Absolutely. That's such a good point. It feels like once we've made up our mind, we can't change it again. Or like <laughs> once we've told someone something that we can't change it. Um, so it's facing that part too, like <laughs> confronting with the fear and then confronting with the fear of changing your mind again. So yeah. Totally. Exactly. I remember last time I talked to you, you were saying you were like, yeah, it's starting to get so real now because like I told people about it and yeah. <laughs> people are starting to like ask me more questions about it. So that means I have to do it. <laughs> It, it's crazy once you put something out there and like the accountability that comes with that. So it, it definitely makes it real when not only is it getting closer, but now um, my friends and family um, know about it as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. And so now that you made the official decision, you are leaving very, very soon. How do you feel inside? Terrified. <laughs> I feel a lot of resistance. Uh, to be completely honest. And this is something that my heart has wanted for a long time. Like I said, like it's been a year that I have really dreamt about this. And now that I'm faced where I actually have to go, I'm facing so much resistance. I have a lot of voices in my head telling me a lot of reasons why this isn't logical, why I shouldn't go. 
this isn't a good decision. This isn't safe. This isn't going to be a good path. I might regret this. I might fail. Um, there's a lot of things that are coming up and I feel like it's, it's creeping up even more at, as we get closer. So that's a complete honest assessment of how I'm feeling about it, even though this is something that my heart's wanted for a really long time. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I love the honesty in it too, because so often when somebody like asks you how you feel about doing something, you want to kind of put on an act and be like, oh, everything's going to be great. Even though deep down inside you're like freaking out, but it's good to, you know, you have to like let your feelings out and show people how you feel in order to like appreciate it, I guess you'd say, or like understand it more. Exactly. Exactly. And it feels authentic when, when I explain it to now. And when I get there and when I talk about like the fear, you know, I can bring people into that too. They were there for a part of that. You know, they were there walking aside, like alongside me and supporting me as I walked through this. Um, it's going to make that much sweeter when, when I get to the other side and when, and when I get there, um, mm -hmm. and, and face it. Yeah. Cause they're going to be on your side too. Like once you're there and you're like calling or texting whoever, and you're like, I'm having an amazing time. Then they also feel like a sense of relief too. And they're like, Oh, thank God. Like, I'm so happy for her. Like they, they're even more <laughs> yes, happy for you, exactly. you know, knowing that everything went well instead. Yes, exactly. Now, how do your friends and family feel about it? Do you feel like some of the fear that you're feeling right now is all on yourself? Or do you feel like maybe comments or concerns from friends and family have kind of affected your, your fear of participating in this as well? They have definitely affected me. I would love to say that I am invincible and that I am not affected by what uh, my friends and family think about this decision, um, but I am not. So that really, I really do think my fear of their opinions um, stopped me the first time when I was supposed to leave about three weeks ago. Um, and then in through this time of going through this resistance and going through this reflecting, I really made the choice that I was only going to seek the true answer of what I wanted to do from within. Um, and it took a lot of quiet reflection. It took, I kind of really did retreat a little bit, um, a lot of meditation, a lot of journaling, a lot of time spent with myself to really only think about my answer. And that's when I thought I absolutely have to go and had some pretty honest conversations with my friends and family um, about how much this meant to me and how I really had to live my purpose and my truth and me not going was me going against like what I stand for and what I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it's so interesting that once you really start to talk about it from that place of your truth and your purpose and let someone into that, mm -hmm. you know, their reactions that you see a shift and mm -hmm. how they see their, or how they start to see your choice now. Mm -hmm. And that totally makes sense because, you know, otherwise I think sometimes close family and friends, they instantly get nervous that maybe you didn't think enough about it. Like you're making this like random decision. It's on a whim and you're just going to pack your bags and go without giving any thought, but that's not the case. And if you can actually like open up to them and tell them your reasoning as to why you're doing this and how much it means to you, then they'll start thinking in terms more of like, okay this is something that she needs to do for herself. She has given it thought. There is good reasoning behind it. And then they'll start to accept it a lot more. Definitely. And I also think, you know, something with that too is like, even the, anyone can do that. And, and I did that and it was very, it was accepted by some of friends and family, but not everyone. And then, so I also had to wrestle with the fact that like, I technically don't have to justify this to anyone mm -hmm. and it's not my responsibility to convince somebody else on how I want to live my life or make a decision or pursue my dream. And there has to become a point where like you can do everything you can to bring someone in and try to show them, but also have to release the fact that like I can't convince someone else to see what I see and to believe in it too. So it's kind of that, it's mm -hmm. kind of wrestling with both of those there. Yeah, definitely. And in the end, you have to just realize that this is your life that you're living and you are responsible for the decisions that you make. And that's most important. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I totally feel you because I, 
I kind of just have to put it out there often to my family and especially my parents being like, I love traveling and I am going to travel as much as possible. I almost just try to ingrain it into their head like randomly just how important it is to me because I want to make sure that when I bring up different opportunities that I have, it's not like a total shock to them, even though they're not always going to be 100% like totally for me going, depending on the situation, but at least they're kind of prepared a little. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And I love that, you know, and you're sharing parts of what you love and your passion with other people too. And, and that's so special. Um, and so it'll make a little bit more sense when you do decide to make these crazy leaps of faith, but mm-hmm. in the end, um, it is ultimately our decision and we have to live, have to live out what, what we feel is right. Yeah, exactly. Everybody experiences at some point in their life, big or small, things that take them out of their comfort zone. And so outside of like even a big decision like this, what is something that usually helps you make the decision to do something to get out of your comfort zone? I think this is such a good question. And I loved how you said big or small, right? Because it's not always these big, crazy leaps like traveling the world for a year or Mm -hmm. quitting your job. And sometimes we can, you know, nowadays it kind of seems like that's the big thing out of comfort zone, but sometimes maybe it's just going to a new place where you don't know anyone or trying a new sport or getting involved in a new community. And those things are out of our comfort zone as well. It's not always these big, crazy dreams um, that we might think of it as. And the biggest thing it goes back to, and I think I mentioned it earlier is that visualization. And so I always think like, which pain is greater, the pain, the pain of staying where I am right now or not doing the thing that I want to do. And I always try to lean on feeling over logic on this one. And I don't know if there's, this is the right or wrong answer. I, I don't think that there is one, but for me, I visualize and really try to lean into like, which pain is greater. And that always, that gut feeling is always going to kind of give me, give me that answer. And I think that's the first step for me when I'm thinking about stepping out of my comfort zone. I love that. You just have to think of like the end result almost. And it's like, what's going to make me feel worse if I, whether I choose to do this or choose to not do this. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And it's, it's interesting, you know, feeling the pain of something will push us to do something like to feel that that's, what's going to push us, um, to get out of our comfort zone and go, and go experience that. And then it's so, it's so much fun because once you do it once you kind of start to really, really love it. And then you Mm -hmm. keep doing it and keep doing it and it keeps, um, going further and further, which, which is fun. I feel like that's exactly what's happened to me. Like as soon as I realized I can do something that pushed me out of my comfort zone and I loved it and there was so much joy in it and excitement and just like an adrenaline rush, depending on what it was, then I'm like, I want to feel that again. So then it helps me make that decision again in the future. Like, okay, well, this is kind of similar to last time. So maybe I should say yes, because I'm probably going to like the end result. <laughs> Exactly. And then before you know it, you're in this, like, I'm constantly getting out of my comfort zone. Like, this is just like how I live my life. Like, okay, wait, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit too comfortable. Like, what can I find Mm -hmm. to push myself a little bit more? Exactly. I totally feel you there. And now you got to the point where you're like, well, I guess that just means I have to take up and like leave for a year and (laughs) travel the world and work remote. Like, (laughs) yep, yep. Exactly. What's going to happen after that? Oh man, that's going to totally be my question when we do our reflection <laughs> podcast know, next Caitlin, year. I wonder what it's going to be. <laughs> it's going to be like five years. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so now what do you hope that you will get most out of this experience of doing remote year? Oh my gosh. A lot of things. <laughs> um, so I don't necessarily have these like particular detailed expectations because this is a brand new experience. So I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to unfold, but I would say the biggest things for me is like, I really want to continue to keep pushing the boundaries of who I currently like believe I am and and what I'm capable of. 
Um, and then I would say another big thing is to building authentic, vulnerable relationships. I really am going to be meeting so many new, awesome people from all over the world. And I'm very, very excited. So I really want to, um, practice sharing my heart, um, and building those really awesome relationships. And then also it's, it's going to be such a unique experience because we're going to be staying in a country for a month. So it will give us a good amount of time to kind of really feel immersed in the culture. And that's something that I really want to, to really immerse myself in and, and challenge my current beliefs on the world, um, and societies and people, and just kind of really be really open to see new things um, and, and see them in a new light. I feel like those are kind of some of the big things that I'm going to be looking towards mm -hmm. in the next year. Awesome. Those are like my two favorite things about traveling is, you know, being immersed in a new culture, experiencing something totally new and different, and then also meeting people while you're there as well, whether they are people who live there and kind of get you more immersed into their culture or people who are traveling with you as well, because especially all the people you're going to be with are from all over the world too. So not only are you going to be learning about this one culture in this one country in that month, but you're also going to be learning about so many other cultures and different information about other countries because of the people you're traveling with. Exactly. Which is going to be a unique experience, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, exactly. That is so awesome. What would one piece of advice be that you'd give someone who might be in a similar situation that you are in or maybe were in when making the decision? I would say that my biggest piece of advice would be don't run from the resistance. Do not run from the resistance because the resistance is going to come. If it's meant to be, if this is something that you truly deep down want and that you know is part of your purpose and you are passionate about it and this is what you want, there is going to be so much resistance. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> it is, it's going to be the biggest right before you do something um, that is really, really living out your truth. So do not run from it. Walk through it. I think that would be my biggest piece of advice. Oh, I love that. That is so amazing. And now do you have any other final thoughts that you wanted to give beforehand? I think I'm just, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me on here and having me think about these questions before I go. I think it's going to be a beautiful experience to see the journey and see the process. You know, right now I am very terrified, even though I know that this is, um, been on my heart for a long time. So I'm excited, um, to see how this journey progresses. And with you, you know, asking me these questions, they really get me thinking. So I'm glad that we were able to do this today. And I'm really excited to see how this all unfolds. Awesome. I am so excited to see as well. Like I can't wait to follow you and see everything that's going on. I hope you're posting on your Instagram quite often so that I can follow too. <laughs> yes, I will be. Don't worry. And now where can everybody find you? on Instagram. So I will be posting my travels and kind of, I'll be documenting my journey, um, as well on Instagram. Um, and so we can put that if you want in the, in the podcast notes, mm -hmm. and that'll be there for everyone to follow along if they want. Awesome. Perfect. I am so excited that you agreed to doing this episode with me. I can't wait to also record one while you're there and see how it's been going and then do a reflection podcast one year later. It's so exciting. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Awesome. And thank you for joining me today. Yep. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks again for listening to the Inspired by Her Story podcast. I hope you found some inspiration, motivation, encouragement, and empowerment to get out of your comfort zone and live your life to the fullest. Make sure to hit subscribe, share with a friend, and take these stories with you to make the changes in your life that you've been looking for. Follow me on Instagram at Caitlin Casso and even check out my work at CaitlinCasso.com. Stay tuned for the next Inspired by Her Story episode.